I want to thank the organizers and Natasha for asking me to speak today. Um, I actually changed from beyond the blood spot to within the blood spot. And the reason for this is actually the blood spot itself contains enough information to do whole genome sequencing. My name is Dan Didier and I've been with Life Technologies for about 10 years now and I'm their public health director. And if you came to hear me speak about our ion PGM or ion proton, I'm not going to, okay? I'm afraid that if I did, I would go into that fantasy land that Dave talked about earlier. Now, people are using these for CFTR screening, and researchers are, researchers are using them for skid testing, for oncology, everything from breast cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer. There's panels for those. If you're interested, go to our website and look at them there. Because like I said, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show a family album. And I'm gonna talk about my family because we've been very affected. And I think it points out a very good picture along the way. This is my older brother, Charlie. Charlie was born in 1954. Newborn screening wasn't done back then. He was actually born on the farm. A doctor did deliver him to my mom and dad. He was their first child. They were very young at the time. He died at five days of age. It still affects our family. My mom still speaks about him. And when she passes away, she's got a grave site next to his. We're gonna fast forward to 1989. This is an ultrasound. And it's amazing how clear it was back then. Today, it's, I mean, I, it's better than a normal picture. Um, but you can actually see the hand here. Looks like he's going to suck the thumb here. Um, but this, this was an ultrasound that was done. And at the time, prenatal testing was done. And during that testing, they looked at alpha fetal protein levels. And those of you that are aware of that is if it's a very high level, it's an indicator. And that's what they look at is indicator of fragile X. So his level came back. It was the lowest ever recorded. My wife and my first child. What does that mean? So what, what happens then? Does anyone know what happens then? You go to a genetic counselor. And even with my background, they're explaining things. This is my you know, child here. You know, it's, talk about being nervous. Talk about being anxious, that anxiety that was brought up by a number of speakers. You're, you get very anxious. So they recommend doing a amniocentesis. So I, amniocentesis was done. And what's interesting, and I don't know if you can see it here, the date, when it was received on 512 and when it was finished on 61, about three weeks time passed. So for three weeks you're sitting there, what's going on? And not only that, but the genetic counselor says, you know, it could be fragile X, but it could be something else we don't know. Or we could find something else. So for three weeks, you're pulling your hair out. You know, men are from Mars and women are from Venus or something like that. You know, stressful on the family, there's no doubt about that. The one thing we could clearly tell from this was it was a boy. All right? We've come a long way from then. Adam was born, a healthy baby boy. September 20th, 1989. So it really did affect me. It affected the way I look at things, especially in newborn screening and prenatal screening. He, at college, studied Down syndrome, sequencing the telomeric region of chromosome 21. His cousin, my niece, has Down syndrome. Today, 
He's at the University of Chicago at the Genome Center doing sequencing. We've come a long way. Jacob, my second and last son, born July 6, 1992, his alpha fetal proteins were low too. Since then, a lot of things have been happening. We did not have amniocentesis done because we weren't as concerned as we were then. There still was a concern, though. And so that's something you have to think of. Now, fast forward a little further, actually, to last year. This day gets to our fantasy land because it's actually not a fantasy land. This is his sequence, his whole genome sequence. That amniocentesis back in 1989 cost $1,000. Insurance paid for it. Today, we're striving for a $1,000 genome to get to that level. Amniocentesis is around $1,500. Somewhere in my pocket. This is Jacob's whole genome sequence. It's a compiled sequence. It's all put together. It's not all the little fragments, the pieces like that. It's all put together in one, one genome, one whole genome right here. The question becomes, one, who pays for it? Who keeps this information? Because I can look now at those things that I know there's a association, a clear association. Tomorrow, other things will be known. Science continues to improve. Who keeps that information and the privacy? And then, who does it? Do the public health labs do it? Do the hospital labs? Who does that? So, fantasy land is here to some extent, at least with my family. In this case, I paid for this. Jacob is in his third year in college. He's on the dark side. He's going to be an engineer. <laughs> he designed the next Mars rover last year, and this summer he spent his time um, designing satellites out in California. So proud of my boys. We've come a long way. And we can continue to go a long way. There are a lot of questions about whole genome sequencing, but the one question that is not there is, it is going to happen. We are going to have it. We have it today. And we'll continue to get more and more information. We're going to always need those secondary tests to confirm things. You're going to want to look for that, because there's always errors that occur. But it is coming. And it is going to be there. Thank you.